Today, we're gonna make an apple pie boche, and we're gonna do it with all, I'll say, quote, normal ingredients. Let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. I've made an apple pie boche before, however, I did it with um, an Amoretti flavoring, which is not necessarily not real, but I wanna try and recreate it with, quote, real ingredients. So here in this pot right here, I have three pounds of clover honey, and I'll, I'll be throwing my recipe up here. I'm gonna use about mm, three quarters, or a gallon of water, excuse me, three pounds of uh, clover honey. In the secondary, I'm gonna add some spices. So I'm gonna add some cinnamon stick and ground nutmeg and a, a clove. I believe that's all I'm gonna need of the clove. I'm also gonna add some graham cracker, so this is for adding some bready flavor and mouthfeel um, to it so it kind of tastes like the crust of an apple pie. All of those spices, of course, are attributing to that as well. And I will be adding apples. So I have about three pounds of apples um, sliced up and frozen right now that are not with me. Last thing is the uh, Lauven QA23. I'm gonna use probably about two grams of that. So in order to do this, in order to get the boche side going, we need to heat our honey up and caramelize some sugars for X amount of time. I believe that I'm only gonna need to be able, only going to boche this for about an hour before I get it to the point where I want it. So let me go ahead and show you the bocheing process. Um, and I have a little color wheel. I'll come back with that here in a second. So this is step one, boche the honey. Okay, so here I'm boiling my honey. I have a big enough pot to where this, when it starts to boil, it'll foam. It won't go up. I have to kind of watch it though. I make a color wheel, kind of looks like this, zero minutes in, and I will every 15 minutes take and get a new sample. It'll probably take about 60 minutes, like I said. So I'll be back in a moment after I've gone ahead and um, done the whole bocheting process. All right, we have finished bocheting our honey, and this is the honey wheel I was talking about. You can see, possibly, oh, you can see that the color changed quite a bit, and I'll put a better picture on the screen right now. This is starting to drip too. The honey is very hot. The color change comes with flavor change because you're caramelizing certain honeys, which then change the characters, and that's totally fine. Uh, we're now gonna start mixing our ingredients, at least for the primary part of part of the fermentation. I've already sanitized everything I'm using today with star sand. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour my one gallon of room temp water into here, and then I'm gonna pour my honey into here as well. Everything is mixed up as far as our honey water, and um, this is called must. Here's the deal, this must right now is about 100, probably in 30, 40 degrees. Way too hot for us to introduce our yeast. So I'm gonna wait roughly, or well, long enough for this to get down to probably 80 degrees, which is a more comfortable temperature for my yeast, and then I'll pitch them right on top. I'll be back with that here in a moment. Um, I also wanna mention to you, I'm not gonna put any of the apples, the clove, the um, any of our spices into it basically until the secondary. And that's because a bulk of the fermentation um, happens in the primary, most of it, in fact, and that is where you lose a lot of aromatic and important flavors. So I'll add those in the secondary. So I'll be back in a second and we'll throw in our yeast. All right, this is cooled down. It's about 80 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So we are ready to go ahead and pitch our yeast and take a gravity reading. I've measured out two grams of my QA23 yeast. I'm gonna pitch it right on top. And now let me show you where the gravity is currently so we can know the ABV. It's important that the yeast not only have a cooler temperature to go into, but also for the gravity reading. If it's too hot of a gravity reading, um, meaning if, it's, if the liquid's too hot, it will askew the results. We are currently at 1.090 for our starting gravity, which is roughly, I believe, about 11.5% ABV mead. 1.090 is a great starting point. I believe that is a pretty good boche. Now you see the coloring on this thing is really light and that's that's okay as well. Uh, I didn't boche for an insane amount of time and I think that's not the end of the world. I don't believe a super, super dark boche would work in this case. Now we are gonna take, put our lid on, our yeaster in there. They'll start to wake up 
and ferment very soon. This is in a bucket, of course, you're not gonna be able to see the fermentation like you would a carboy, but that's okay. So I'm gonna put my airlock on, my lid, everything, write down my information, super important, and we're gonna let it go through the primary fermentation. After that, we'll add our other ingredients. So here is after the primary fermentation. The apple pie mead has finished fermenting, and I'm, well, at least I think it has, because the bubbling has stopped, there's not a lot going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a gravity reading and we're gonna see where it landed and then rack it over and do some things. All right, our gravity reading shows that we are just a little bit over 1.000. We're probably 1.001. We started at 1.090, ended at 1.001, just a little bit, little bit of residual sweetness, 0 0.089 to be exact of um, gravity chewed through. And that's roughly in the realm, I think, of about 11.8%, um, if I'm not mistaken. I'll put it up here as well. So the thing with this is it was lightly bouchéed, so there wasn't a lot of caramelization of the honey, meaning less, meaning there were still, well, I'll put it this way, not a lot of sugar was burned, so there isn't gonna be as much, as much residual sweetness. I'm gonna go ahead and take a taste test of it. So let's get a little taster and then we'll see what we want to do with it now to make it more apple pie-y. Yeah, it has this very atypical to me boche smell because I've of course made a lot of boches, which is um, caramel notes from honey. This is a clover honey, so it's got a lot of uh, bright floral um, notes. I get a little lavender, slightly rose-y to me. Those are bright, um, uh, bright flower smells to me. Let's try it. Yeah. Ooh, that's good. It's got some bite because it's pretty high ABV, about 11 and a half, I said, almost 12. It's kind of um, citrusy. Yeah, just that little shang of the honey has brought out some caramel notes, but it's got like a bright fruitiness to it, which I was not expecting um, from a clover honey like this. Mm, it definitely needs some time to mellow. The, um, there's a lot of bite from the alcohol, a lot of burn from there. And I like it. Let's go ahead and make it now an apple pie boche. So I need to rack it over into this container and then I'm gonna add in three pounds of apples. So we see here, uh, my cinnamon sticks, my clove, and my other ingredients. And so let me go ahead and do that real fast. All right, moved over. Quite a bit of sediment here at the bottom. You can see there that's, oh, nice. That is a lot of dead yeast and things and stuff I'm throwing across. To make this apple pie-y, we do want those other flavors like apples. So step one is gonna be to add my apples in that are right there. So I'll do that here in just a moment. But I do wanna put in the cinnamon. Um, I'm gonna put in the cinnamon I've, I've decided later. What I've learned about organic cinnamon sticks is what, which is what I have, is that they are very strong flavored and a very strong flavoring, I guess and will very quickly impart flavor. So I don't need to necessarily put them in now because the apples might need to stay in for two weeks or so or more. Same thing for the graham cracker. So it's same thing for the clove. I'm basically in this stage just going to add the apple. So these are three pounds of um, gala apples. I'm just gonna dump them right in. I could have put them in a bag, but I've decided not to do that. They'll just sit on top. I can't really get a good shot here, but they're just gonna sit on top of this. They were frozen, um, so yeah. There will be a little bit of re-fermentation because the yeast will eat some of the sugars from the apples. Do I know how much ABV that adds to this? No, but am I too concerned as a home brewer? No, I, I'm making something that's gonna, gonna be between 11 and 12% probably, ultimately, and I'm fine with that. So I'm gonna close my uh, lid, put my airlock on, and then this is gonna go for probably another two weeks to impart the apple flavor to get into here. And then after that, we'll add graham crackers, cinnamon sticks, clove to finish out the spice side. So let's let this sit for two weeks and see what happens. It has been 12 days since we put the apples on and we are gonna go ahead and rack this over and taste test it. The apples are, I'm pretty sure they've got everything out of it. So um, let me go ahead and do that real fast. Here's all of our uh, used up apples. Obviously we don't want to put that in the meat anymore. There's a bunch of um, just stuff in there. So 
that's what's what we've used. Let me go ahead and get a taste test and tell you what I'm tasting. All right, here's the taste test. Definitely on the nose, it smells like, um, it smells a little bit like apples. It smells a little fruity. Definitely get a nice, that caramelized honey from it. Yeah, let's taste it. Ooh, that, um, there was a little bit of a bite from the um, alcohol that has been kind of fixed, quote, by this apple, the apple sweetening, the apple taste. Yeah, it's um, not ex ex not a very strong apple taste. It's not like crazy strong in my face. I think that the competing flavors are the Rocher honey, which has caramel notes to it. And of course the actual like apple, which is brightness. Both are kind of trying to compete for the spotlight, but it's definitely there. Yeah. Okay, let's see now. Uh, we're gonna add our spices in and our graham crackers and things. So we have a lot of things to add. And I'm adding, I'm adding some more things. I have here, I have some cinnamon sticks. I'm gonna add a whole cinnamon stick into this. So, a smaller one. This is an organic cinnamon stick. I'm gonna add a whole clove, which of course we can rack off of the clove. So that's a whole clove right there. Uh, I'm gonna add a quarter, or excuse me, an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. An eighth of a teaspoon of cardamom one whole um, piece of crystallized ginger, which does have like a sugar coating that could possibly ferment some. And to get our bready flavor, we have our, um, our graham crackers. So I'm gonna add three graham crackers on top of this. Now these things, I'll probably have to pull off the graham crackers in two or three days for it because they obviously just soak up liquid so I'm just gonna put them in here okay and they have their own spices on it so this might end up being very spicy tasting which is okay so let me go tell you everything I put in so first of all one cinnamon stick I put an entire clove I put one eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg one eighth of a teaspoon of cardamom a <laughs> crystallized ginger piece and three um, graham crackers so that's all in here right now the graham crackers are already soaking up things. What I've noticed though, when I have used graham crackers though in the past is that they do impart a lot of nice flavor and body. They actually add some bready body to it because it is bread. So now I'm gonna let this set for a couple days. Like I said, probably gonna have to rack off of the, um, off of the graham crackers in the next two or three days. After that, we'll uh, you know continue to let things age. All right, it's been about five days since I added all the spices and the graham cracker. You can see that the graham cracker has kind of floated around here. It's also just sank to the bottom because of course it soaked up the mead. And um, this thing smells incredible. Super spice, I mean, you get all the spices from it. It definitely smells like the crust you'd get on a apple pie. Oh, and that apple, the apple's popping through as well. I think that the apple just needed some spices around it to maybe point it forward. It's starting to definitely appear. I mean, this thing smells like an apple pie. It kind of smells like the apple pie um, moonshine, if you've ever had that. I've had that a couple times, it's pretty good. Oh my gosh, this thing smells great. Let's taste test it. Oh yeah, that spice is strong. It's definitely got some bite from the alcohol. The apple's apparent. Um, it's definitely fighting against some of the spices though. Graham cracker adds a little bit of mouthfeel, a little bit of body to this. I mean, I think this thing, it does taste quite like an apple pie. The problem is it's not very sweet. It has some residual sweetness, but it's got some more um, dry side. If I want this to be desserty, I'm gonna have to make sure and sweeten it. So that probably will be something I do. I, I think this thing is great. Five days is not a lot of time. However, what I've learned with um, things like organic cinnamon sticks and ginger is that generally they impart flavor quickly. So you don't always need to put the, you know, leave it in there for a long time. Let's go ahead and rack this off of everything that's in there, including those things, the um, 
the ginger and the cinnamon stick and the graham cracker. And then we'll talk about the next step. All right, here is our mead. It is obviously a little less clear than when we started and that's because of course spices and graham cracker and things get in the way. Here's what the mead looks like. Kind of looks like a little bit of throw up with some things in there. You can see the clove is in there as well. The, um, I don't see the, the ginger, but I do see the cinnamon stick. So it's all there, um, hopefully. There is a little bit of sediment at the bottom of this. I couldn't keep all of it out, but that's okay. So here's what I wanna do from here. I want this to be sweeter. It's at a great point ABV wise, 1.090, after primary 1.001. So we're looking at roughly a, uh, I believe those numbers are like 11 and a half to 11.8% ABV mead. So um, this thing is great. We are gonna stabilize it now. We're gonna use potassium metabisulfite and sorbate. Those two things stabilize the mead, allowing us to add honey without any more re-fermentation. So let me do that. Okay, so now I add my sorbate, my one teaspoon or half teaspoon, excuse me. And we add our metabisulfite, which requires less. Now we can safely back sweeten and um, make this taste more like an apple pie. So I'm gonna put my airlock back onto these and then we are going to let this set. The sorbate metabisulfite is gonna get mixed in and then we add our back sweetening stuff. So let me wait about 24 to 48 hours. All right, we're about four weeks later after we have stabilized this thing. Um, it is currently at 1.000 gravity. So that little 0 0.001 that we had, it's gone. Um, so that's that. I'm gonna go ahead, of course, and take a gravity reading after we back sweeten. So let me go ahead and back sweeten and I'll tell you exactly how much honey I've added to taste to get this to the sweetness level that I desire. Okay, I've added four ounces of honey, which is a quarter pound of honey. I should also say, I'm using um, orange blossom honey because I want to continue to pronounce the fruity flavors of apples and orange will help me do that. It's nice and sweet. Definitely, um, the spices still kick through. However, contrasting with the sweetness, I'm getting that full apple pie flavor. You get some breadiness, some mouthfeel, which is nice. It was very, so desserty, so nice. Ooh. This thing's fantastic. It's not too sweet, not like so in my face that it hurts, um, but it definitely has that dessert vibe. You get all of the spices in there and they're all pretty well mixed. One is not necessarily popping out more than the other. You just get this kind of solid baking spice taste. The uh, graham cracker, of course, adds some uh, mouthfeel. We have a little mouthfeel from adding honey to this now. Golly, I'm a fan. This thing's great. Okay, um, because we, stabilized it, we are able to hopefully not see any fermentation, but I'm gonna ensure that there is no fermentation. So I'm gonna pour this in lightly, so maybe we don't oxygenate too much. And our next step is going to be to bottle it after this. So I'm gonna wait about 24 or 48 hours, make sure I don't see any re-fermentation, let some things settle to the bottom because I did stir up some uh, sediment, and then hopefully we, when we bottle it, we don't have extra sediment. So here is that process. All right, we are here to do a taste test. It's been about three weeks since I've touched this thing. Um, this is my friend Tony. He is a uh, very competent wine person and mead person. He deals with a lot of alcohol uh, sales and of course just tries things. So I have lots of faith in his opinion on this. Um, so Tony, I already told you a little bit about this. This is an apple pie mead. I've literally put every single spice that you would find in an apple pie, and graham crackers for bready flavoring and apples and all that. Let's just taste it and you tell me if it tastes like an apple pie. When do you make this? This is, uh, this is two months old now. Okay. About to the day, about two months old. And it is yeah, no shake. this is balanced. You know, I remember, it's funny, like, I, I, <clears throat> having tasted all this stuff, because I don't see you all the time. Yeah. Having tasted, like, because I remember the first time you did Boucher, and then, you know, we've had a couple of others. Um, <clears throat> and 
thinking about like I probably haven't seen you what like three four months. Yeah, it's been a bit. Um, I can already tell this is, and and even the last thing we just tasted, much more balanced. Um, mm -hmm. That burnt aroma that I think that I smelled in the very first boucher you did, it's not there. Like mm -hmm. it's, it has like like roasty kind of roundness to it, but it's okay. it's not like I can get that. Yeah, it's not like a burnt smell, which I didn't actually find offensive when, mm -hmm. when we when I tasted your first boucher, um, but it wasn't something that I thought needed to be there. Yeah, you know, I understand that. Well, I got something for you to try for this. It's cool. uh, a <laughs> super boucher. And it, and yeah, like you can really smell that graham cracker. Apple comes through a lot more on the palate. Like it, it feels exactly like you'd expect liquid apple pie to be. Yeah, hmm. it's a little thin, mm -hmm. I think texturally. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't, I actually like the sweetness level, but I think it could be sweeter. Really? Yeah. I was I a always, little afraid to go too sweet on this because I want it to be apple pie e. And I want that honey character to pop, but I didn't want it to overwhelm everything. Yeah. Yeah. It's... The spices are more nice. muted than they were a couple weeks ago. A couple okay. weeks ago, it was like the cardamom Intense. and cinnamon and clove and all that stuff were just in your face. More so than the apple. The apple is like mellowed out, which I find interesting. Um, I think that, I, I think you're right though. It is, it does have a lot of like apple cidery flavor to me. Plus, you know, the breadiness from the graham cracker. Um, I don't think that that I see what you're saying, mm -hmm. but it the the because the apple overshadows the honey. Yeah. Um. But texturally, I mean, obviously, it's just it's a different it's just a different animal. Yeah, I, it's really good. So are you saying it needs more body at this point? I think it needs more more viscosity, and okay. I honestly just think sugar would help with that. Just giving yeah. it that weight. Uh huh. Um, just letting it kind of be sweet like let it be a dessert yeah you know um, for, i guess if you're gonna drink an apple pie mead you're gonna think it's pretty dang pretty sweet, sweet. I, but this is it's not underwhelming yeah you know it's just uh i was anticipating more sugar okay um and what's good been to offended that. by that yeah i don't i mean kind of getting into it you're thinking okay this is this is gonna have sugar to it yeah you know? hmm. well I think so far, I appreciate it. This, those notes are great because obviously I'm, I've am i been the only one to taste test this so far and say, you know, what to add or what to take away. Um, so I appreciate that. Yeah, the only, the only constructive thing I'd say about it, it does thin out a little bit on the back. Like it just kind of, it, it just, it just kind of drops off. Uh huh. Um, I, I, but again, sugar, I think sugar would, would okay. help carry some of that. Um, but it's balanced. It's pretty well balanced. It's, um. It's Good, got a little oily. Burn. It's not really, really thick, but yeah. it's nice, oily. And I think with me being honey, I kind of per personally I prefer that texture. Yeah, that, that rich. I don't want watery. That's for sure. texture. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Tony. Thank you for coming and helping me. Um, I've got some things to do to this clearly, so uh, let's continue on with this apple pie mead. Okay, it's been a couple more weeks, and uh, my next step, I'm gonna follow Tony's advice, and I am actually going to take. <clears throat> and add some maltodextrin. I was thinking lactose, I'm gonna add maltodextrin. So let me go ahead and add as much as I feel like I need to this thing to get it to where the body is full, and then I'll let you know how much that was. Okay, I've added 1.5 ounces in total. And I'll tell you this thing, it its body is drastically changed. Um, I feel like the graham cracker feel, uh, whatever taste is more pronounced because it has more body. So it does feel more like an apple pie, like a solid apple pie, not so much a liquid apple pie. I'm good. I'm great with that. That's not too heavy, not too light. 1.5 ounces of maltodextrin. I'm going to let this thing sit for another at least 24 hours to make sure all the maltodextrin gets mixed in and for things to um, fall to the bottom because I did stir up a little bit of sediment. I don't really want to rack all that sediment into bottles. So let me wait another 24 hours and then we'll go ahead and bottle this. Okay, here we are. I have just finished bottling. I'll show you a little clip right here. Um, I ended up with about two wine bottles worth of this mead and four beer bottles out of this gallon, which is pretty typical. Uh, most gallon 
the you know containers you're going to get probably uh, 11 10 to 11 beer bottles generally so or four to five wine bottles if you're lucky um, I'm super pleased with this one and uh, I'll show you a picture of my label um, and my little setup right here uh, right now. This is what I put on them. This is called the apple pie boche. I didn't think of a clever name. And of course it has all the ingredients that I listed before. I seriously would highly recommend you go make this thing. I know a lot of people have made an apple pie mead in some fashion. So this is not necessarily um, its introduction to the world you can find a bunch of other people's recipes that I'm sure are great. If you would like to try this recipe, it's of course down below. And uh, yeah, this this recipe is also listed on my website, which is manmademead.com underneath the recipes tab. And you can find a bunch of my mead recipes. Go make this one, try it on your own. Um, I am super pleased with it. I mean, it legit tastes like an apple pie. Crackers, graham, uh, excuse me, crust and all. So. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment if you would like to um, support the channel or just want to comment and say what you think or thought about the video. And of course hit subscribe because that uh, helps to, you know, help you see things in the future. Thank you guys again. I hope to see you in another video in the future. And with that, cheers.